scripture from Romans chapter 10. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. You know, this week we're going to, or uh, these next few weeks, we're going to be uh, basically learning how to be those beautiful feet that bring the good news of Jesus Christ into the hearts and lives of those who do not yet know him. And what a privilege that is. But we know that's not an easy task and so that's why we're here. We're here to get better equipped, to gain more confidence, um, and truthfully to, to get motivated through the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Let me just give you a quick little overview of what we're going to be experiencing tonight. Uh, our first session is going to focus on our calling in Christ and our calling is disciples of Christ. And part of that calling, of course, is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to look at some of the scriptural background for that. Then we're also going to look at how God has provided for us to fulfill that calling. And as the old saying goes, God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. And he has certainly equipped us to do what he's called us to do. And we're going to see exactly how he has provided. Uh, it's the not so secret secret to sharing your faith. It's going to be really important for us to, to focus on that. Then the next three weeks after this, it's going to be a little more practical. And we're going to look next week at some of the basic core tenets that need to be shared if you're talking to someone about your faith and helping them come to understand the gospel. And so it's really, what is the gospel? And we're going to look at some of these basic tenets, these key things that we need to be able to share in a very concise and succinct but effective way. And so that's going to be a real practical lesson, very important lesson. And then the week after that, we're going to focus primarily on testimony. How do you take your story, shape it into a, a, a way that we can share effectively and concisely. And then the last week, we're going to focus on how do you take a conversation and turn it into a spiritual conversation? Uh, and then also, how do you answer some of those tough questions that we're all afraid of, right? And so anyway, we're going to get some really good practical tools that are going to help us to um, be the, the beautiful feet who bring the good news. I'm excited tonight. Jeremy McDonald will be our, our presenter. And uh, these guys, it's all deacons who put this together. They've done a great job. We're really blessed to have their leadership. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and dedicate our time to him. Father, we are honored to be here tonight. For those who've been able to gather in person, we celebrate that we can do this now. Father, we thank you for those who are joining us online, and we just invite your presence to be among us wherever we're at, whether here or at home. May your Holy Spirit just surround us and remove all of the distractions from the busyness of our days. Father, we pray that you would just give us this joy and this excitement and this clarity of thought and mind and heart to hear and learn and, and then respond. So, Father, we invite you to lead us tonight. I pray for Jeremy. Thank you so much for who he is, his love for you, what you've put on his heart to share with us. So guide him and use him to teach us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. a good way to start things off. All right. I am just so thankful that you guys are all here tonight. I know everybody's busy. A lot's going on. We're getting towards the end of the school year, getting ready for summer. 
but I'm really thankful you're here. I'm thankful for those that are joining online. I just can't help but feel that this is so important in all our, our individual growth, our growth together as a church, so that we can come alongside of each other and do what we're called to do, okay? Uh, really want to take time to thank Pastor Scott uh, and really all, all the staff. Uh, they've helped, uh, helped us come together and be able to put this program on. Um, I'm excited, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm just praying that you'll, you'll take home something that's going to help you uh, in your day-to-day walk and your ability to share the gospel. So I'm going to go ahead, little disclaimer, let you know, I'm nervous, okay? I'm going to put it out there in case you couldn't tell. I got to thinking. So the last time I had to speak in front of a group of any size for more than about two minutes was my high school graduation, 29 years ago. So my, uh, my public speaking, uh, what do you call it? My public speaking uh, training consists of competing in 4-H aromas for talks and demonstrations when I was about that big. So that's it. Lots changed since then. But I'm glad you're here. I hope you'll have patience with me. Uh, I have a newfound respect for what Scott and Ryan do on a weekly basis. It's kind of kind of crazy. Um, what, we're, what my job tonight to do is just to begin, we're going to talk about what is our calling in Christ. Um, how do we reach the world by telling others about him and what he's done for us? So I got questions for you. First of all, show of hands, nod your head, however you want to do it. Who struggles? in sharing the gospel with others. Who has a hard time with that? I do. I, I'd be surprised if anyone could ever say they don't. I mean, it, it's, it's not an easy thing. So this is an audience participation time. What are some barriers that we run into? Just shout them out. And what, what comes in the way? What, what blocks us from being able to share the gospel? Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Insecurities. Is that what we said? Okay. What else? Rejection. Okay. Awkwardness. Absolutely. I'm feeling that right now. Okay. Afraid you're not able to remember the scriptures or not having confidence in your, in your kind of your knowledge. Absolutely. Okay. Any others? Not knowing the answers to their questions. Those are all fantastic. For me, it's like, uh, it goes with fear of rejection. You know, we have our friends and I mean, in our family, you know, these are the people we need to be sharing the gospel with first. And, and we're afraid that we might hurt those people or we might lose that friend or things like that. So we all have barriers. And, and my prayer is that each and every one of those through the next four weeks, you'll, you'll pick something up that'll help you get through that. Okay. And having heard what you just said, I really feel like you will. Okay, I'm excited about the next four weeks and excited to be here in front of you. So we'll look at the next slide there, Dan, and, and we'll kind of, Scott already kind of took us through this. Tonight you get me. Congratulations. Um, next week you're going to get Bob and, and Michael Hall. They're going to lead us through the gospel message. Okay. Um, then the third week, Bob and Dan are going to go in more about sharing the gospel. You know, we need to, to, to know what the gospel is and now how do we share it? Dan does a fantastic job of taking you through developing your personal testimony. Yeah, really looking forward to that. And then the last night, Steve Arnold's going to take us through some of those questions, you know, that we know we're going to run into today more than ever. And he's going to help us walk through kind of being able to respond to those. So what is our purpose in Christ? All right. So we, the church, have one mission. It's the Great Commission. We're called, to call, we're called to spread Christ's rule on earth by making disciples. That's Matthew 28, 18 through 20. I heard a pretty good preacher preach on it this weekend. So um, it should be fresh on everybody's minds. So um, let's go through that. It says, and Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So again, Pastor Scott preached on this weekend, that this past Sunday, and how fitting and how perfect is it? Because um, he can fill all the gaps that I'm going to leave out. Um, so let's look at that first line, all authority in heaven and earth, right? So this is Jesus speaking. This is our king, right? 
This is our Lord. So what does he do next? He gives us a commandment. He says what? Make disciples, make disciples, make disciples, right? Tells us how to do that. He says to go. We're going to baptize. We're going to teach. And then what does he say? Very, very last line there. You can't forget that. I'm going to be with you to the end of the age. All right. That is, is so important in when we dive into this and we try to complete or fulfill this mission. So we've got our mission. We've got our marching orders. We know what to do, right? So should we consider, is this an easy task? We just all said it's not, right? We all have a hard time with it. Um, we all run into road bumps. Um, so Paul was, was told Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.12, Paul warns us. He says that in order to live out the mission, we're going to experience persecution. He had reminded Timothy of his own persecutions, including uh, being stoned and left for dead. Um, so in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.12, he says, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So we can expect that. Now, fortunately, I don't think any of us are being lined up to be stoned, but we face real persecutions every day. We face real roadblocks in our world, um, whether it be your work world or your friends or, or what, wherever you are, there are things that are keeping you from sharing the gospel. So we know that the mission's difficult. Fortunately, we don't have to do it on our own. Again, we remember he's, he's with us, right? We have a helper in the Holy Spirit. So let's kind of look at the role of the Holy Spirit um, in helping us to share the gospel. So if we go to Acts 1, 4, and 5, um, I'm having a hard time seeing up here. It says, uh, and while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So in the very beginning of the early church, Jesus instructed the disciples to do what? To wait, to wait for the Holy Spirit. So I'm pretty sure if the, if the disciples needed it, I do too, right? So the Bible's just full of, of texts that, that help us through how do we remain in the Spirit or how do we, how do we uh, have the Holy Spirit? Uh, Paul first says in Galatians 5.16, we've got to walk in the Spirit. Um, he says, but I say walk in the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Our sinful nature is contrary to the Spirit. Next, we've got to be filled with the Spirit. So Ephesians 5, that says 5.18, but I'm going to go ahead and read a little more. 5.15 it says, be careful then how you live not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So we need to be filled with the Spirit. Next, we have to pray in the Spirit. Jude 1.20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. And lastly, we've got to put sin to death by the Spirit. In Romans 8, 13, it says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So we've got to walk by the Spirit. We've got to be filled by the Spirit. We've got to pray in the Spirit. And we've got to put sin to death by the Spirit. Ultimately, we cannot accomplish our mission on our efforts. Only God's power can transform. Okay, We're not able to do this by ourselves. So, we're, we've got our mission, we've got the Holy Spirit with us. Now we got to look at what is finished business and what is unfinished business. Hebrews 10, 10, 12 tells us that the work of salvation is complete. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. That's done. God's paid the price. But what's unfinished? Where, where does that leave us in the role of this mission? Bringing the message to the gospel to the ends of the earth, that's unfinished. That's where we, wrote, that's where we play. Uh, we talked about the Great Commission. I think Scott used the, the words this week in co-mission. We're to come alongside God in this mission. We're to collaborate with God. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. So we're called to be His ambassadors. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. 
Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. So we're carried to call, or <clears throat> called to carry the good news of what he has done in Jesus Christ to the very ends of the earth and work to see his, his rule fully established in every corner of the world. That's today, you know. So I got a statement, and then I want to consider this question, okay? So let's go ahead and get this statement up here. It says, God chose to fulfill his purpose on earth through his church. Quite simply, there is no backup plan. God has promised us that the church will fulfill the mission. So he promised us, he said in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. So there's no backup plan. Considering this, I mean, how should we change how we view evangelism and where we play in that? What's our role there? Okay. Um, we know we're going to win the mission, right? That's going to happen. But I think to me, this, this should make us just, uh, there should be some more urgency there, right? Um, so next, we talk about what the mission is. Well, how do we do what Christ calls us to do? So I just think the best way to do that is to look at the early church, right? Um, first of all, we have to be a holy community. Acts 2, 42 through 47, it says, As they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayers, and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all these things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received... <clears throat> They received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Man, I mean, what would it be like? I mean, these people came along to do life together and do ministry together, giving God all the glory, and he added to their number day by day. I mean, to me, that's the picture of what we at Calvary need to be doing, what we need to be doing in our lives day to day individually, come alongside each other to do ministry together. So they were set apart for God's purpose. We have to be set apart for God's purpose. When we are, people will take notice and they'll want to be a part of that. So the next thing is we have to be a fearless community. Now we already talked about Paul and uh, his, his troubles and uh, his persecution, and again, he told to, in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 12, um, that all who desire to have a godly life in Jesus will be persecuted. So we talked about that. Definitely, we need to be a fearless community. We've got to face this head on. Like the early church, we must boldly proclaim the truth of the gospel and reach out to the hurting world around us. So the next one, guess what it is, is we have to be a bold community. Now, I'm, I'm starting to get excited. Okay, you can't tell. So the, the text I have, it'll come up in a minute, is Acts 4, 23 through 31, all right? And I hear, you know, good pastors tell you that you got to have context with Scripture, right? Or it can be taken out of place. And so I was trying to read up, you know, and, and, and get a good grasp of what happened before this text, because if you, don't, if you don't know what happened before, it doesn't make any sense. And I read, and I had Jackson come out. You guys know Jackson. I had him come out, and I'm talking through it, and I'm stumbling and fumbling. And I finally I looked at him and said, I just got to read the whole thing, don't I? So y'all bear with me. I'm going to read Acts 4, and let me, just, let me just tell you, there's so much good stuff in here. I mean, it covers everything. It covers everything we need to know about evangelism and sharing the gospel. Um, so y'all bear with me, all right? So Acts 4, it says, The priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and, <clears throat> were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who had heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. Okay, so that's crazy. So the next day, the rulers and elders and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so was Caiaphas. John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? 
And then Peter, Peter, he kills it right here. He says, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and ask how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you, your builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to the men by which we must be saved. I mean, he's talking to the guys right here. I mean, these are the people who put Jesus on the cross. I mean, this is boldness. This is fearlessness. This is, for, he's being obedient to God's call to teach and to preach. Um, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, this is everything that we need to pick up over the next four weeks. This right here, okay? So we keep going. He says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled and ordinary men, they were astonished and they took, the note, took note that these men had been with Jesus. So yes, they were ordinary men. They were like us. They were less educated than us. But you know what? Something was different. Something was different about them because they had been with Jesus. So how do we be with Jesus, right? How, do we, how are we different? How are people going to take notice of us being different? Um, let's see here. So, But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. Evidence was there. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everybody living in Jerusalem knows <laughs> they, what they have done and out there, that they have done an outstanding miracle and we've not, we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men to speak no longer to anyone in his name. So they called them back in and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But then old Peter and John come back. He says, Peter and John replied, judge not or judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help but speaking about that that we have seen and heard. So. I ask you, how would it feel to just be so full of the Spirit that you can't help but talk about Jesus? You know, what would that feel like? I, uh, I, I hope to know, you know, but they were so filled with the Spirit, they couldn't help it. It was just going to come out, right? There was nothing that could stop that. So that's pretty amazing. So if we keep going through the text here, um, it says, when they were released, they went back to their friends and reported what the chief priest and the, and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and they said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of the father of David, your servant said by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your service to continue to speak your word with all boldness. While you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the same through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which where where they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So that's my prayer, you know, that we can speak the word of God with boldness. So we know we need to be holy, a holy community. We need to be fearless. We need to be a bold community. What next? We need to be fruitful. Okay. So how do we bear good fruit? We look at uh, John 15, 1, 11, and I'm just going to give you a little preview. you going to have a little homework on this one this weekend or this week. So, uh, But first, we're going to look at John 15. I'm not going to go all the way through 11, but it says, um, I'm having a hard time seeing it. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Let me read that again. Already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. To me, that goes back to that finished business. Um, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, 
Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So again, we're going to look at that a little more. We've got some questions I want you to look at uh, as you go home this week and kind of consider this text, but uh, as it relates to evangelism and, and what we're doing. But we've got to bear fruit. And how do we bear fruit? We've got to remain in him. Okay. And he will, he's promised to remain in us. So why is all of this important? Why is evangelism important? Um, Proclaiming the gospel to a lost world cannot be just another activity on the church's agenda. It must be central to who we are. It has to be our DNA. Like Peter, we shouldn't be able to help but to speak the gospel to others, right? Our world needs the gospel now more than ever. I think we can all agree on that. So Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So we, we're going to circle all the way back to the mission, right? The Great Commission. It's right up there. We'll be Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So this is our mission. Our faith, our, it should be anything but private. We're commanded to share, right? So I just want to leave you with a couple of quotes um, and, and a discla another disclaimer. So a lot of you guys have on, been doing D groups and how many have just read Multiply? Several, okay. Yeah, most everything I said today was in that book. So um, a lot of credit to Francis Chan. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing tool and resource. So thankful to have that. But Francis Chan, said every aspect of our world has been stained by sin and death. From the very beginning, God has had one plan of redemption. This plan reached its culmination in the person of Jesus Christ. The world is in desperate need of redemption. God has given his church the task of sharing his good news and bringing healing to that which is broken. And then another quote by Dr. Robert Coleman, he says, we are engaged in warfare. The issues of which are life and death. And every day that we are indifferent to our responsibilities is a day lost to the cause of Christ. It's pretty heavy right there, right? I mean, it's warfare. It's life and death. And so are we looking at this as a matter of life and death? It is life and death. It's our family members' life It's in death. It's, it's our friends. Um, it's the people we come into contact with that God puts in our, our path. So I just kind of want to leave you with, with one last thing. Um, we have everything that we need to be able to go out and battle for the souls, for the Lord. We have a Savior that went to the cross to pay for our sins and arose three days later, overcoming death. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the same Holy Spirit that was there on the day of Pentecost. We have a church community. We have a church family that's going to come alongside of us and, and, and just and help grow and help us through this process. So we have all those things. You have that today. So regardless of where you are in your walk with Christ, you're ready to share the gospel, okay?